Good morning. This is Dr. Matt Springer here for the Snake ID of the Week segment. Uh, as always, I want to start off by highlighting our Snake ID website found at kysnakes.uky.edu, which is our centralized location for information about all of the species that we have in Kentucky. Uh, and it also has that ID your snake tool uh, present within it uh, so that you can try to use that to if you saw a uh, or got a quick glimpse of a snake uh, or got a really good glimpse of a snake, you can try to use those features that we're going to talk about here today uh, to ID that species. So let's take a look at our image that was submitted for uh, identification. And this is coming from North Central Kentucky. As you can see, it's in a water body, uh, probably a pond or a lake. Um, where we have cattails and this snake is in the cattails probably trying to get away from who's taking this picture. Uh, but this is a pretty common um, way we encounter snakes in this setting where we have a, a snake that's all along the shoreline trying to skirt us maybe or get around us or potentially looking for food in those that area and then we just happen to encounter it at the same time. So if we try to identify this snake we're going to look at some of the features and you can see a few here. Uh, the one that's really clear is that banding pattern on the snake and thankfully we have really nice clear water to see that. But if we try to find out if this snake is either venomous or non-venomous, we'll start off by trying to zoom into that head and see if we can pick out any of those features like the uh, pupil shape, head shape, whether there's a pit present at the front of the, the head. Uh, and unfortunately, no matter how much work we do editing this picture, it's not gonna get any better and we can't see any of those features. So none of those which are really um, more reliable and easier for, for beginners to pick up uh, are present, okay? So let's go back to that, that bigger picture, that clear picture, the full image, and we can see that banding pattern. So let's, let's zoom in on that because honestly, that's what we need to know for this uh, snake. And our options here, you know, being in North Central Kentucky, uh, and the water, a lot of people will think that, you know, with the banding pattern present, there's a couple of different options. One would be in Copperhead, okay? That would be the one that everyone tends to jump towards. The second being uh, water moccasin or cottonmouth, which being in north central Kentucky isn't actually an option. They don't tend to uh, be found east of the Green River, uh, so it's mostly a western Kentucky species. They do have a banding pattern uh, that's variable, uh, but they have a very, very triangular head. So knowing location, that kind of eliminates them from, as an option here. So if we zoom into that banding pattern, and if we're thinking copperhead, what we see here is that we have the dark and light banding that varies. If we zoom into the dark banding and look at that though, the dark banding is widest at the top of the body and narrows as it goes to the belly, which gives us an upside down Hershey kiss, whereas the copperhead would have that reverse where it's narrow at the belly and, and or wide at the belly and narrows at the top of the back. So it's not a copperhead. And they, they can be found in the water, they're, they're, they swim just fine. Uh, they're unlikely to be there, but they can be found there, so they shouldn't be, you know, eliminate them right off the bat if you're in the water. However, knowing that we have a banding snake in north central Kentucky, um, where there's limited other snakes that would be found in the water with bands, our answer, um, if we look at it, is actually one of the most common snakes in Kentucky. Uh, if in and around water bodies, and that is our common or northern water snake. These guys have a pretty strong banding pattern. They're really common, can be found at pretty high densities, especially if there's a lot of prey items, which are uh, smaller fish, amphibians, uh, and even rodents um, or birds um, that are near uh, any source of water. They can be travel a little bit further away from a water body. However, it's not common to find them, say, in the middle of a field or uh, in the woods. But uh, completely harmless. However, they have a little bit of an attitude problem uh, and will bite you if you try to pick them up. And it, they have some, enough of a teeth presence there that can hurt. Um, so not one that I recommend um, toying around with. So to end this week, I want to, as I always do, I want to talk about, you know, making sure that you identify what snake you're dealing with and what you see and uh, make the appropriate decision. If you want less snakes around, reduce those shrubby areas around your house or garden. Keep your grass mowed short. That'll help eliminate cover for the snakes and also cover and, and food sources for the prey they may be after. Remember, these guys have a lot of positive benefits to having them around. It's full-on garden season right now, so having a, a rat snake near and around that will help uh, 
eliminate any other uh, small pests from, from uh, taking away the food that you work so hard to grow. Uh, and as, as always, you know, we have our, our snake website as a resource found at ksnakes.uky.edu, or you can uh, absolutely use our uh, extension group as a resource if you have any other questions. So don't hesitate to reach out. And thank you and have a wonderful rest of your day.